This is Xiao from uh, VTEC Lasers and Sensors. Um, I'm a photonic engineer. Today I'm going to talk about our activities on the core detector for uh, simultaneous beam tracking and the communication. Um, this is the outline of my presentation. So I first give an introduction of the company and then I will demonstrate two systems where detectors um, are used in uh, free space communication systems. Uh, one is for long distance, another is for ultra long distance. And then uh, we come up with the idea of combining the two functions of photo detectors on the same chip. And then we, um, we had some uh, uh, design, we have the chip designed and we had some uh, measurement results uh, to discuss here. And lastly, uh, we, I'll talk about the further de development that we are planning to have on, on this uh, topic. Uh, first is a company introduction. Um, uh, we are a local business in, uh, in Eindhoven. Um, we mainly have two, uh, two main activities. Uh, one is in photonics, one is in IoT. Uh, in photonics, we are working on uh, chip and chip on carrier designs for data centers. Uh, this is uh, purely digital communication. Uh, we are working on 25G uh, directly modulated lasers and 25G uh, externally modulated, modulated lasers and 56G uh, externally modulated lasers. And on the receiver side, we are working on 25G PIN and APD devices. We also have some integrated um, activities uh, are targeting at receivers for uh, CWDM4 and long WDM applications. Uh, from the start of this year, and, and, um, and we have some uh, activities uh, working on a core detector uh, that is intended to be used for beam checking uh, in free space optical communication systems, uh, which is uh, today's topic. Um, in the meantime, uh, the third part of our photonic ac activity is testing and packaging which means that when we have the chip designed and manufactured by the fab we also have some in-house uh, capacities to have the device characterized we could do uh, LIV uh, spectrum measurement uh, and s parameter i pattern bit error rate measurement up to 25 uh, gigahertz uh, for the packaging uh, side, we could do Y bonding and die bonding. We could do matching circuit design and the packaging design. And for IoT, which is uh, another major part of the activities in the company, uh, we actually involved in the whole chain, which means that we could uh, collect a variety of uh, sensor data to uh, our gateway, uh, which uh, can be either connected wire or wirelessly uh, in the loop. And then we, we, have, um, we can have the data uploaded to the cloud and we can have the data analyzed in the cloud. We are providing uh, our APIs to the customers and we could develop on the application side, uh, a dashboard uh, for our customer to show them personalized the data or, um, or general data. And we could also send notifications to, uh, to users. And of course, we could also do uh, the software maintenance and update uh, in a remote fashion. Uh, so um, next, so these slides we could see, um, it, it, this is a published system um, which uh, demonstrate 1.28 terabyte per second um, a trans WDM transmission via 32 DFB lasers. Uh, and then what, um, what I want to show here is uh, in the right hand side, you could see that there is a beacon beam together with the signal beam uh, that is have been pointed to the quadrant photo detector. This is used for uh, the beam alignment. And then when the beam has been aligned uh, via the, the control loop uh, for, that controls the fast scanning mirror, uh, and then the communication could start. And also, and on the left-hand side, you could say that um, a receiver on the receiver side, there is also a high-speed uh, data communication, a uh, high-speed photo detector for 40 gigabit per second uh, data communication. Uh, this have been uh, performed, the, the communication has been established in uh, 
210 meters the distance. So this is, uh, so we could see that there are uh, detectors, separate detectors for data communication and detectors for beam alignment in the long distance uh, communication terminals. And the next slide is, uh, is acquisition and pointing control for inter-satellite laser communications, where we could also on the left-hand side see a, a receiver uh, for data communication and a four quadrants detector for beam alignment. Um, and then as we had some um, experience in digital high-speed uh, photo detectors, uh, and also we recently have requests in, uh, in detects for beam alignment, and then we come up with the idea of integrating the two functions together, uh, which would reduce uh, the complexity of the system. So there are actually two uh, approaches that we uh, think would be viable. Uh, first is we use the core detector for beam tracking. We make the sites a little bit smaller, uh, which could be suitable for uh, data communication purposes. And also in the meantime, we could use a DC signal for beam tracking. And the second one would be um, integration together the two photo detectors on the same footprint. Um, there are a couple of arrangement uh, that have been uh, 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 that have been considered at this moment, but it's not, uh, it's not the time to, uh, to disclose the, the details. Um, so uh, this slide shows how, uh, how the quadrant detector are behaving for beam alignment. Uh, so in the first picture, one, we have, a, we, have a, uh, we have a quadrant detector and we have a beam, collimated beam uh, pointed to the position in point, in, in figure on the left hand side, as you could see that uh, there is a red spot, which represents the collimated beam. Uh, as the light are hitting on different uh, isolated active areas on the four quadrant, the current that is generated are different. And uh, when the beam is not aligned, the four quadrant will have different current readings. And in the red hand side picture, um, which indicate that the beam has been positioned to the center of uh, the quadrant detector. And then we will have all the quadrant have the same level of current. And then we know by uh, simple mathematics, we will know the relative beam position on top of uh, the quadrant detector. Um, this, is, this approach is considered to be, uh, to be better than the single uh, beam alignment, single detector beam alignment that, that is uh, 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 based on the beam alignment principle because when we have a collimated beam that is hitting in the middle of the active area, we will not have any uh, changes in output current of a singulated uh, detector. And we have, next I will, I will um, talk about the activities that we have for developing such a, such a device. Um, we, uh, we design and build electronics for reading out of the quadrant, uh, the current of the quadrant detector, um, which is basically the transcendent amplifier and, and ADCs uh, that have been controlled by a controller. Um, and we designed and we designed the uh, core detector and have it processed in, the, in a wafer fab and we get the device and we uh, have test um, some of the characteristics of the core detector. And of course, we build up the test setup uh, in-house by ourselves. Uh, so here you could see the arrangement of the, of the DC characterization of the test bench. So we have a quadrant uh, detector and we have the developed uh, four channel TI and four channel ADC that they have been uh, controlled by a controller and data is fetched in, on the PC. And PC also controls the movement of a two directional stage, which uh, length fiber is attached so that we could change the position of the light spot on top of the quadrant detector. Um, those are some in-house developed electronics. So we have, uh, we have in the left-hand side, a picture showing that um, we could with this in-house developed electronics read out current as low as uh, 
it's nano amp level. So you could say on the left top picture that we feed in current from zero to 10 nanoamp with a step of one nanoamp, we could see the changes in the ADC. And when we increase the step further, the, the steps are more prominent and obvious. And this, uh, and this device will eventually saturate at three milliamp, which, is, uh, reaching, which will reach the, 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 the range of the ADC. And this is a test bench that we have. So uh, on the left uh, bottom, there is a core detector that have been die bonded and wire bonded to the PCB um, that's showed in the picture. And uh, on the left bottom side, this, this is a, a two step motors that, uh, that controls the movement of the fiber. Uh, and what we did is we did a mapping, uh, which means that we move the fiber on top of the four detector of, of the core detector. And uh, if we plot the normalized uh, intensity of the, of the total power of a four quadrant, we could get the picture on the right hand side. The reason why we do this is we would like to know um, the influence of the gap. Uh, because if, for instance, if we have a gap that is uh, completely blocking the light, then in the real uh, application scenario, we will not be able to focus the spot smaller than the gap uh, size. Then we get nothing when the beam is hitting the gap. Uh, but in this case, we didn't see any, um, we didn't see any uh, uh, presence of the gap, which might indicate the, li the light have been uh, uh, hitting on the gap are uh, scattered again into the active uh, area of the photo detector. Uh, in these slides, we could see two examples of how the, uh, the result looked like. So when we sweep at, uh, at the upper side of the figure from top to down, we could see that on the right hand side, the channel intensity, the channel three have increased to the maximum and it drops, drops because it have across the middle point of the core detector and then the channel four reaches the peak and then it goes down again. As it is a lensed fiber, so it's a, it's a Gaussian beam, uh, which actually diverges. Uh, that's why you could see a Gaussian profile instead of a flat top uh, presented. And also in the channel one and channel two, you could observe the similar thing. And when the fiber, when the, when the fiber moved to the top of channel one and channel two, you could say the, the other way around, the, the signal intensity in the channel one and channel two is higher than channel three and channel four. And the crossing point would be the middle position of, um, of the, the, the beam that is crossing the, the upper part to the, with the, to the lower part of the, from the core detector. Um, in this slide, there are um, on the, with the same process that the core detector is developed, we also developed a single quadrant uh, photo detector that was intended for data center communication. And um, uh, we have actually measured on the left-hand side, you could see a very small device that is wire bounded to a transipedance amplifier. And then it's wire bounded again to the trace line, to the IF trace line that is connected to a bit error rate tester. Um, we have performed the single quadrant uh, detector that have the same that have the same uh, epi uh, with a core detector and the same uh, and the comparable active area size, which means that uh, the parasitic capacitance will be similar, and we were able to get uh, PBRS signals. Um, we would able to get the open eye at the 25G BPS. Uh, PRBS signals. And we also perform some bit error rate testing uh, of the device. Uh, so when we uh, have the uh, core detector manufactured, we also measure the dark current and the capacitance of, the, of each quadrant. As you can see in the left-hand side, we have around 4.3 nanoamp at uh, dark current at around minus 10 volt uh, reverse bias voltage. 
And on the left-hand left side, we, with all the four quadrants, we have around 125 uh, femitone farad uh, capacitance, which would indicate that this device would be suitable for 25 Gbps uh, communication. Uh, next will be some further uh, development. Uh, we are now currently working on to, uh, to get the uh, quadrant detector packaged so that we have four channel DC and IF out so that we could perform a transmission test of four channel. Uh, and then in the meantime, we could, uh, we could really perform uh, when we have the, the, the prototype ready, we could really perform, uh, uh, know the performance of how the combined function uh, core detector. Um, thank you. And this wraps up my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for listening.